I got my disability when I was working at an aircraft plant as a metal stamper. It's a dangerous job, working with big hammers. And what happened was, my hand was in a dangerous area. The hammer came down on it and smashed my hand. How did I feel? Of course, after losing a hand, I didn't know what to do. Why did it happen? What will I do next? I wasn't married at the time, I was a young man, and now suddenly I'd lost a hand. Me and my elder brother were coming back from school. I was six and a half years old, and it was winter. It was hard walking on the slippery paths, so I decided not to go by foot. I took a tram. But the tram didn't stop at my stop. The door was open though, so I jumped off. My school bag was big, full of textbooks. As I jumped off, it got caught on something. My leg went under the wheel and it was crushed. Then the tram stopped and I was taken to hospital. They didn't tell me it had been amputated, just that it was bent. They were afraid to scare me. When I properly woke up, I saw that my leg was in bandages and that half of it was missing. Research shows that amputees can often feel isolated and alone, unable to carry out the everyday tasks that used to be second nature. A loss of self-esteem, self-worth and self-confidence often follows. Of course you're worried. You don't know what to do with yourself or how to act amongst people. How can I explain? A person feels shy, not ashamed, but embarrassed, self-conscious to show himself to other people without a hand. You can feel everybody looking at you. It's difficult having only one hand. There's lots of things you can't do. But sometimes with only one hand, I can do more than two-handed people. Zohid Ojar was just 25 when he lost his hand. He's now 52 and has a 21-year-old son. The disability hasn't stopped him taking up leisure pursuits, though, and thanks to a chance meeting, football has also become a part of his life again. My friend Rahim, who I used to go to school with, saw my disability and naturally felt sorry for me. It had been a while since we'd seen one another. And then one day we met, and he said, Zohid, why aren't you doing anything? There's a new football team of disabled people. They're just like you, go and have a look. You're a sporty guy, you used to like playing football. We used to play together at school. So I went there and I liked what I saw. Everybody was the same as me. You see, when people with the same status, with the same type of disability meet, they feel liberated. He's the same, I'm the same. We're all alike. And we have to show each other that we're friends and brothers. The rules of amputee football are basically the same as the regular game, with just a few differences. Teams are made up of seven players who play two 25-minute halves. Outfield players may have two hands, but only one foot, whereas goalkeepers may have two feet, but only one hand. The players must use metal crutches and play without their prosthetic limbs, although exceptions are made for bilateral amputees. It's forbidden to use the crutches to control or block the ball, the goalkeeper can't leave his area, and the offside rule has been eliminated. The sport was introduced to Uzbekistan in 1989, and they've been taking part in the Amputee Football World Cup since 1998. Last year, Uzbekistan won the tournament for the third consecutive time, defeating six-time champions Russia in the final. Uzbekistan has never reached a high level in football, and we've tried to make that happen. We want to show the whole world that Uzbekistan exists. It doesn't matter if it's through amputee football or something else. Just to show the world that, though we're a small country, we are here. 18-year-old student Zafa first started playing amputee football, aged just nine. Five years later, he became an established first-team player with the national team. When I went to see the team for the first time, our goalkeeper, Zohid, said, take a ball and kick us against the wall. 
You're new here. When you learn to do this, then you'll play with us. So I started kicking the ball, and eventually I got used to it. Sometimes my brother would help me by playing football with me. And step by step, I started playing with the team. In the near future, I want to go to the Amputee Football World Cup and win the competition. His chance will come next year when Mexico play host to the tournament. Adjusting to life with a prosthetic limb requires an extensive course of physiotherapy and rehabilitation, and playing football has played a crucial part in helping Zafa and Zohidoja overcome their physical disadvantages. It's given them a positive outlook that's helped put their trauma behind them. Unless I take my artificial leg off, I don't realise it's missing. When I walk with it, I feel like a normal person. Yes, without it, the leg looks strange. But if by some miracle I could have my real leg back, I would refuse it. There are several amputee football associations around the world and each one is promoting the further development and recognition of the sport. Not only that, like here in Uzbekistan, they're providing hope and opportunity for the players.